I don't want, after putting that much money in, for it to leak out in a few days because I missed a leak. So I'm going back through and double checking all the spots that were acting stupid before. Here's a fun one. The air handler is upstairs in the garage. The compressor is down here in the crawl space and the condenser coil is outside. So anyhow it's not running. They just had a TXC replaced by someone else. So we're finding out uh, what's going on. I'm not getting a signal up on the one area so we're going to check and see if we got anything here. Contactor looks a little burnt. Definitely not too impressed with that. All right, so we don't have any voltage there either. I'm gonna have to go upstairs and see what's going on. All right, so I went up there and she had it turned to 80. So it's coming on now. Let's see if we can get a check on this thing and see. Ah, that's hot. Nine. Okay, so that's going to be hot there because that's discharge off the compressor. It's going to go to the condenser, come back on the liquid line, go to the evaporator, and come back on the suction. That's not cold, so that's not good. The guy replaced the TXV on this thing. We're going to go ahead and see if we can find out what's going on with the refrigerant charge. All right, so if you look at this unit here, it's completely empty as far as anything in there. This is just a coil only and nothing else. So our pressures are going to be the same. So we're going in and going out the same. Our differential doesn't come back until it goes through the evaporator. So with it being R22 and it's about 80 out here, it's low on refrigerant. So what I was afraid of and this thing well, it's 10 pounds, so you do 10 times the going rate of R22, and this is not going to be cheap. So, I guess we're going to go in there and look at the TXV that was just replaced and see if that's where our leak is at. Alright, so we've pretty well scanned the whole system over. We've got some spots where it looks like there might be a little oil, but I think it's where they take the, have taken their hoses off. So, anyhow, I'm... Not picking up anything leak-wise at any of the normal usual spots. I'm going to go ahead and gauge up on this thing in the normal area here. The uh, suction line is down here on the accumulator. And the compressor is hot, so you can tell it's low on charge. We're going to look for this leak or recharge it or whatever. I mean, it's hot and the folks are a little bit older. And it's one of them things where they're not against changing it, which... I think is the option that I would prefer them to go with just because of the age of this thing. R22 is what this thing is like superior on. Here's the TXV that they just replaced, which not picking up anything on his solder joint or on the flare. So, yeah, I don't like that thing. Wow. All right, let's go. Let's go to medium. I'm large now. Why didn't the other one not go off at all? Something up here is leaking for sure. I don't know if that's suction line or it goes through this freaking wall. I mean, I'm sniffing it out there in the barn or garage. Makes no sense. Now, we come in here and it freaking goes off. It didn't go off earlier. And this leak is so freaking uh, big that it's kind of hard to narrow it down with the other. So this is where she's going to do her thing and go around and start searching and see where it starts going up higher nothing down there ok 
getting closer. Ah, I bet you I know where it's at. All right, let's make it easy. Now, I took these caps off originally. These caps obviously were holding back from the leak, but I ain't gonna say that's the only thing, but you can see right there. You should be able to hear this now. But let me cover that back up. See if we still get the crazy leak signal. else fails just get the big blue and call it a day I think uh, that there is leaking so bad that it's polluted the area down here yeah it's pretty bad look at that one it's leaking on that one too <laughs> they're both pretty bad so we're leaking like a sieve through those we're gonna change those out got valve core tool there get this put in Probably gonna recharge it back with R22 and get him up and going because he's sensitive to the heat and uh, it's been running good, I guess. So I don't think it was anything the other guy did wrong. Just things happen, you know. I'm gonna show something here. Basically, I'm showing as you're adding the refrigerant to it. This is something I didn't catch at first, but basically, when you're adding the refrigerant and you're checking your subcooling, your liquid line temperature is going to rise and eventually it's going to drop down. When you're coming down off that slope, then you're on the correct side of it. So you're going to see that we're really low right yet. I've added four and a half pounds so far and this holds about 10. So if you look at the temperature, we're at 97.8 and it's starting to continue to rise. It was at 80 something earlier. I don't see anywhere on here with the uh, Subcooling value is I'm gonna shoot by 12. This is why when you're low on refrigerant, your discharge gas temperature on your compressor actually goes up. There we are. We're finally starting to come down. We went up to 99.3, and it's starting to come down as we're adding. So now we're on the right side of the loop. We'll stop right there for a moment and look at our subcooling. Still about nine and a half. We're throttling this liquid in really, really slow. And it'll be within reason. It's not like it's going to keep on going all the way down to like 40 or something, but it will drop. We're getting close to our area there. So as that's going down, your head pressure is going up, which is your condensing temperature going up, and that's your separation, and there's your 12 or whatever it is you're required to have. Which, right now we're at 10 and a half. At least we know that we're starting to form in liquid. Let's stop there for a moment. I think it holds about 10 pounds. 9.3. So pretty much all, almost all of it was gone. And our subcooling kind of corresponds to what we're talking, so... little funny tick noise to it. I did charge a good majority of it in vapor at first, and then uh, once I started losing my pressure, I went ahead and went to liquid. And we brought it in super, super slow. Kind of funny that they put the uh, suction port there uh, after the accumulator. You would think they would have put it before it. That way, if you charge it a bunch of liquid, that it would protect it. But it don't. It goes straight into the compressor. We're scanning her over. Just to make certain, I don't want, after putting that much money in, for it to leak out in a few days because I missed a leak. So I'm going back through and double checking 
all the spots that were acting stupid before. And I'm not picking up anything as of right now. Whereas before, she was just going berserk all up in here. And you've seen that. It was just going off everywhere. So we are not getting anything right now. I've already scanned the garage. Nothing out there at all. So we're going to go ahead and get this contactor changed. This uses a single pull contactor. So I'm going to jump one side and get that burnt thing out of there and get them up and going. And then that'll wrap this one up.